Let me ask you this because, boy, I got some pushback on this one on Friday night. You know, Zach Eady through the regular season, I guess you could say even through the Big Ten tournament, it's so clearly the national player of the year. Like if if you have a ballot and you don't put him number one, you're just trying to be different for the sake of being different. But at CBS Sports, we do not vote for national player of the year until after the Elite Eight. And I don't know if this was the catalyst for that decision, but at least for me, one of the things that I never liked about the 2010-2011 season is that when it was over, Kimba Walker was clearly the star of that season. Star in the Big East tournament. We still remember the crossover uh, against Pitt. Uh, He goes on and leads the Huskies to the national championship. When you look back at that season, Kimba Walker is the star of it. But he wasn't the national player of the year. Jimmer Fredette was. And so, again, I don't know if that is what made us adjust the way we do this. But at some point, we decided we're not going to name a national player of the year at the end of the regular season or at the end of the conference tournaments. We're going to wait until the final four because then all but four teams are done. And you, you you don't miss out on the Kimba Walker stuff. And with that in mind, I just sort of like, it's not like I tweeted, I'm not voting for Zach Eady for CBS Sports National Player of the Year. As we sit here right now, I think I probably still will end up voting for Zach Eady the same way last season. I still ended up voting for Oscar Shibwe, even though he lost in the first round uh, to St. Peter's. But I just sort of acknowledged, at least in my mind, that for our purposes, this does open up the national player of the year race, because whether it's Jalen Wilson at Kansas or uh, Drew Timmy at Gonzaga or Trace Jackson Davis, Trace Jackson Davis at Indiana. And we'll get to the night he had um, Brandon Miller at Alabama, Marcus Marcus Sasser at Houston, Jaime Jaquez at UCLA. If one of these guys goes on this crazy statistical run and carries a team to the final four, I can imagine myself at that point voting for somebody other than the guy whose team got rocked in the first round by a 16 C. Where are you at on that? Uh, I'm with you. So you go back and look at TJD, just for example, Indiana beat Purdue twice in the regular season. Now tonight, Trace Jackson Davis does something pretty historic that I guess we'll get to, but in terms of his stat line, he's off to a great start in terms of putting a team on his back and taking them somewhere pretty far uh, this month. I think we emphasize as college basketball media, college basketball fans, just the college basketball culture is so geared towards NCAA tournament performance that, yes, absolutely, these next couple of weeks are going to fully dictate how that conversation goes. I think in all likelihood, I'm going to end up voting for somebody other than Zach Eady. Okay. However, I will leave the door open for, let's say, uh, San Diego State makes the Final Four out of the South. Uh, Tennessee makes it out of the East. I'm looking at my bracket down here. Um, Northwestern makes it out of the West, and uh, Pittsburgh makes it out of the Midwest. <laughs> those aren't those aren't teams with with these crazy star players, guys who we're even considering for All American status right now. So it's conceivable that these five or six stars whose names we just mentioned don't get far enough to really warrant that consideration. But if somebody from that category, Miller, Timmy, Sasser, Hawkes, et cetera, a couple more that we named, one of those guys uh, carries their team to a national title, they're the national player of the year. That's right. I mean, it, it can't just be a guy who was a, a, a first-team all-conference but not an all-American who then carries his team to the Final Four. That guy's not under consideration. But it, it's it's other – consensus All-Americans, mostly first-team All-Americans. Again, if I were betting, I would bet right now that I end up voting for Zach Eady for National Player of the Year. All I was pointing out on Twitter is that I think that race, that race that felt closed now feels open to me based on the way that we do it. And, um, you know, it, it was, I wasn't surprised by the pushback, but like some of it's just rooted in, in nonsensical stuff. Like we all agree all season long. Everybody agrees that w- your team's success matters when it comes to National Player of the Year candidacy. In other words, if not, why is it Antoine Davis the National Player of the Year every year? He scores more points than everybody else. Make that guy. And I, no, why, why is he not even a candidate for All-American teams? Because his team stinks, and we don't pay attention to it. 
when your team loses in the round of 64 to a 16 seed, that factors in to the conversation. If we have have decided as an organization to include that as part of your body yeah. of work. Yeah. And, yeah. and so this, Gary, what, Gary, what happened think, on Friday night matters. Yeah. I think what it is, is you just invite a lot of scrutiny upon yourself because of the way you pronounce groin. I can't say that word. It's such a weird word. It's so what ad- is, br- it, what is Brandon Miller's injury? It's, it's an adductor injury. It's an adductor injury, which doubles as a soft tissue injury. All right, so Adam Zucker is tossing it to you in CBS Sports Network on, on the desk, uh, have, teeing you up to talk about the biggest storyline around uh, Alabama going into the second round. A key, a key, uh, key player is dealing with what, Gary? An adductor injury. Brandon Miller has been diagnosed with an adductor injury. He did not go through live contact drills on Friday. He remains a game time decision. I expect him to play. You can play with an adductor injury, but obviously he's in some sort of discomfort or else we wouldn't even be talking about this. I literally just Googled what is another name for that type of injury and it popped up a ductor injury, yeah. so now I'm committed. I might be the I only guy in college basketball calling what Marcus Sasser has an adductor injury, but mm-hmm. it is technically right, and it is so much simpler to say. I will take that every day of the week over your horrific and offensive pronunciation of <laughs> groin as, as growing. It's hard. I mean, it's, that's just wild. I don't that know why. I, it's a mental hurdle. Like, I have to – if you want me to say it, I have to like wind up like a pitcher almost. I have to go <laughs> coin Des Moines, then I say it. I can't, okay, once okay, I get hey, going. Once I right, get so going, you, I can do it, but I can't just I can't just say that word right out the box. Okay, so your kids at school, and the teacher asks him to write a poem about um, his his mom and dad. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, wh- how do you say poem? How do you how do you say that? That word? I call poems raps. I would just say write a rap about okay. me. But you said you said point that you you said poem. Can poem. I say poem? Poem is that? Am I saying it? Poem. My kids I mean, I just was worried that I, I was worried that somebody who says groin growing would also say poem poem, and and you are that person. So uh, it's just you know. Anyway, I just this is tough. I'm, language yeah. language is tougher than you think for me. You know, this is where growing up in North Mississippi, like you can shed some of that stuff, but but maybe. But maybe not all of it. Either way, Brandon Miller, Marcus Sasser, they're both dealing with adductor, ADD, mm-hmm. adductor injuries. Hopefully they'll be okay this weekend. Let's move on.